Hey guys, Trey here from Madwitz Chasing. Uh, been wanting to do these kind of videos uh, for a while now. I um, really enjoy forecasting severe weather and I like helping others learn how to forecast severe weather. So um, I thought I'd, when we when there's a severe weather event, I thought I'd you know do a quick little uh, forecast overview um, of you know either a couple days before or the morning of, just kind of going over the the, the setup, uh, what the hazards might be and why we might see those hazards. Um, I'll call these uh, convective chronicles. I've uh, been inspired by uh, Levi Cowan's uh, tropical tidbits uh, for during this hurricane season and thought, you know, I'd uh, try to do something something similar for severe weather. Um, kind of keep it simple. I'm not going to go into detail on every little thing I, I usually look at on a chase day, but just a, a, a sort of a brief overview of, you know, the upper air uh, surface data, uh, models, cams, uh, all that stuff, uh, kind of condensed into a, a short little video, kind of showing you what I'm thinking for um, that particular severe weather event. So uh, we have a uh, day one enhanced risk put out by the Storm Prediction Center this morning for parts of southeastern Oklahoma, western Arkansas, northeast Texas, surrounded by a slight risk that goes into central Oklahoma, southeast Kansas, wet, uh, southern Missouri, uh, down into eastern Arkansas and uh, farther down into North Texas. Um, so let's take a look. Let's start by looking at uh, the upper air maps. This is our 500 millibar chart from 12Z this morning or 7 a.m. Central Daylight Time. We have a, uh, a deep trough here digging down into the um, southwest and the southern plains centered here up in Wyoming um, with a speed max rotating around it. Um, let's take a look at the uh, 850 millibar map. Uh, you can see the sort of low-level reflection of that um, upper trough. Uh, nice low-level jet going on in the, in the southern high plains right now. Uh, that will fill in as the day goes on. If we take a look at the surface map, um, as that flow, that strong upper-level flow traversed the Rockies, we got a uh, pretty strong surface cyclogenesis. Uh, Lee cyclogenesis uh, to the just to the east of the Rockies, you can see right here. These this is the surface map valid uh, at 15z, uh, so 10 a.m. And you can see we have a kind of two little surface centers here. The, the stronger of the two is up farther north, uh, in uh, centered eastern Wyoming, uh, western Nebraska, uh, western South Dakota. Uh, very strong gradients up here, very strong winds expected uh, behind this sur this uh, sur surface low center and blizzard conditions as well up into, the, into Wyoming. But there's sort of a secondary reflection um, of the upper trough at the surface here, a second surface low center. You can kind of see the, the isobars uh, uh, rotating anticyclonically here over the Oklahoma Panhandle, um, northeast New Mexico, south East Colorado, Southwest Kansas. That is going to be the player uh, for our severe weather threat today. Uh, there's a cold front extending off of that, uh, and a warm front will be um, uh, will push northward through the day through our target area. So um, let's take a look at uh, some model data now. Uh, actually, let's go ahead and look at the surface data here. This is the uh, surface chart. Uh, from 1558Z, so just a couple of minutes ago. It's about 11 a.m. on the dot here in Oklahoma right now. Uh, but you can see we have uh, southeasterly surface winds uh, veering to southwesterly out here over, over the Texas Panhandle as a reflection of that surface, that secondary surface low. You can kind of see it uh, through the isobars right in this region, right over about Elkhart. Um, but you notice, notice the green values, the dew points here. On a severe weather day, we like to see, you know, into the mid to upper 60s, even 70s. And in our target area, we're, we're seeing mid 50s, upper 50s, fairly weak moisture right now. But if we look down to the south, we've got six, upper 60s and 70s dew points, basically south of a San Antonio to Lufkin line. That's where our deeper moisture resides. So as this surface low, this surface low center down here tightens, and strengthens this afternoon and evening. It's going to really strengthen this surface flow out of the south and southeast. It'll really ramp up and really start to evict this moisture northward and use this warm air northward into our target area. So 
but the timing is going to be critical about when when that moisture arrives in uh, in in tandem with the best uh, dynamics and instability is going to be critical in our in what severe weather we're going to see. So let's take a look at some model data here. This is the 12Z NAM run. So you can see it shows our our trough here over Wyoming digging down into the southern plains. That speed max going to rotate into the plains by this evening. This is valid 0Z now uh, tonight, which would be about uh, 7 p.m. Central Daylight Time. You can see that speed max rotating into the southern plains. Uh, and then as we go down a level to a couple levels to 850 millibars, you're going to see that low level jet really ramp up after dark. So you can see a significant increase in the low level jet after dark. This is valid 6Z. Uh, so 1 a.m., it would be early Monday morning. That is what's going to really enlarge hodographs and increase the low-level wind shear uh, for the potential for tornadic supercells. And I forgot to show this at the beginning. I showed you we had an enhanced risk over the Southern Plains. Here's our tornado probabilities. You see we have a 10% here uh, in Southeast Oklahoma, including towns like Hugo, Ida Bell, Broken Bow, uh, Ardmore, Durant, uh, and down in just south of the Red River, down uh, to near Sherman and Denison, Texas. We also will see some wind out of these storms, 30% wind probability, and the potential for significant hail exists in the initial growth phase of these storms as well. But back to the models, you'll see that low-level jet ramp up, and then here's our surface dew points. So let's zoom in here to the southern plains. When is that moisture progged to arrive in our target area? So you can see... Uh, it's showing nicely, uh, nicely matching up with what we saw on the surface OBS. Our moisture is south, is confined to southeast Texas and deep south Texas. It's, as that surface low strengthens out here over the Oklahoma and Texas panhandle, it's going to really rapidly draw that moisture northward. So by 21Z uh, today, which would be 4 p.m. Uh, Central Daylight Time, you can see the upper 62 points are, are infecting just north of the Dallas metro area right now, approaching the Red River. We have some, some, some low 60s creeping into eastern Oklahoma. Then by 0Z, it gets up into the Red River area. And by 3Z, that deeper moisture finally arrives and uh, is able to act on that cold front out west, cold front slash sort of pseudo dry line, uh, is able to act on that moisture and produce storms. So, let's take a look now at the, um, let's do the satellite real quick, since we kind of glanced over it at the beginning. Uh, here's our visible satellite. You can see the loop here. Low-level moisture present. You can see the, the cloud streets down here, these low clouds down in South Texas. You can see it start to advect northward here in the, these last few scans. Fairly clear out here over Oklahoma and North Texas. Um, and you can see, let's take a look. So we know we have low-level moisture. Let's take a look at infrared. That was visible imagery. This is infrared. This shows us our high-level clouds and high-level moisture. And you can see we're, we're pretty, pretty devoid of, of a lot of high-level moisture. And if we, we can confirm that by looking at water vapor, yellows are dry. Yellows and oranges are signify dry air. The blues and whites signify more moist air. Lots of dry air aloft here. It's good in that it will create uh, some, some conditional instability for us later on. As that surface moisture advects northward uh, below this layer of sort of drier air aloft, we, that'll steepen our lapse rates and create some pretty significant instability for us. Um, some products are showing two to 3,000 joules per kilogram of K for convective available potential energy that will allow storms to, to rapidly explode uh, as the uh, ingredients come together. So let's take a look at some CAM solutions here since we've looked at our uh, our observed data and our model data. Let's take a look at the HRRR model. We'll go back a couple runs to the 12Z run. This is our high resolution model. It shows us uh, the uh, ref simulated reflectivity or, or radar image that you might see uh, later on today. Uh, so this is, as we go forward in time, see not much going on before 0Z zero zero, or 7 p.m. It's about sunset now here in, in Oklahoma. Not much going on. That moisture is still lagging to the south and not quite getting up into our target area. Where that, uh, But as that, that trough 
uh, the upper trough moves in, that enhanced belt of flow aloft moves in. Later this evening, storms start to fire just along and ahead of the cold front um, that would be uh, moving to the southeast through Oklahoma. And then by 4 and 5Z, you can see we get, kind of have a broken line of supercells and Boeing segments uh, that would have the potential to produce um, hail, damaging wind, and tornadoes. We'll show you some, some, some forecast soundings in a second. But if you remember from our, our map discussion, our, 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 uh, if we, when we looked at the um, upper air maps earlier, we ha we'll have strong southerly winds at the surface veering to westerly aloft. So we'll have pretty ample wind shear for these storms to act upon and uh, become severe. Uh, that would have implications on hail production as well, our steep lapse rates aloft, uh, and uh, the fact that we're gonna have rotating storms increases the hail threat, and also a tornado threat. We'll show you some forecast soundings a little later on um, about uh, showing you the wind profile for this evening, showing that it is supportive for tornadoes. Here's the latest HER, the 14Z run. Uh, you can see not much different, storm still firing later on, basically I-35 corridor um, all the way up just w east of the metro in this scenario down toward Ardmore and down into to northern Texas and they continue kind of have a broken line here by 5Z or midnight uh, and then it becomes sort of merges into a full-on squall line by the early morning hours of Monday. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, Worf ARW. This is another cam. Again, these are just uh, guesses at what the radar might look like at, at um, these these times that we're showing. These are not set in stone, obviously. So, but these are this just shows the range of scenarios that we might get uh, later on this afternoon and evening. So you can see again by zero Z, not much in our target area. No storms have fired yet. But by one Z, we get storms in northeast Oklahoma. Then boom, by three Z, 10 p.m. Storms start to fire in southern Oklahoma, kind of congeal into a line as they move off into western Arkansas and, or, uh, and eastern Texas. Uh, we'll take a look at another CAM model, the NSSL WORF model. And as we move on, 0Z. Now here's some indication, this, this model showing some indication that we might may get some prefrontal discrete supercells. You can see here, here's the main front back here, storms blowing up along that front in kind of a line, but we do have some discrete storms out here ahead of the line. Now this is pretty uncertain. We're going to need some sort of low-level convergence boundary uh, or, or some, some horizontal convective role or something to focus convergence and lift uh, in the warm sector to allow these storms to go. If we do get these storms to go, the environment is definitely uh, primed for large hail, damaging winds, and potentially a strong tornado or two. We'll show you some forecast soundings in a second, but if this scenario can happen and storms stay discrete, uh, then they will have the chance of producing tornadoes, potentially a strong tornado or two. And as we move on here, uh, you can see the discrete storms kind of continue until that line takes over in the early morning hours of Monday. One more cam real quick, the NAM nest model. This is the uh, higher resolution NAM model. So this is the 12Z run. So you can see we have, and this, so this model also showing some attempt at convective initiation before dark. And if we uh, move on here a couple hours, these storms kind of stay maybe semi-discreet before, here's, here's your front back in here, and here's your storm. So there's kind of a broken line of supercells. And if we take a look, this would be at 3Z or 10 p.m. Let's take a look at some forecast soundings just ahead of that line in the kind of the inflow region of that broken line of storms. So we have pretty solid in solid uh, uh, instability here. A little bit of a capping inversion. That, that is also going to be a question. Will storms remain surface-based? Uh, the earlier on they can form, the, the better chance they will be they will uh, be surface-based. A little bit of a capping inversion here tells us that the, these storms by now might be elevated, but if they can uh, sustain themselves and there's not uh, too much inhibition near the surface, the photographs are, are fairly uh, 
loopy in the low levels. Long hodographs indicative of uh, strong winds aloft. We do have some turning in the low levels, south southeasterly at the surface, veering to southwesterly in the mid levels of the atmosphere. So we do have looping hodographs. Let's go forward another hour as that low level jet really ramps up. If you remember, our 850 winds really ramp up in this region. So let's take a sounding from right there, basically about Hugo, Oklahoma. This would be at 4Z, so 11 p.m. And you can see our hodographs really enlarged at this point. Big looping hodographs in the low levels with um, some decent instability, nice moist profile here, uh, and not too much uh, inhibition at the surface. And, and if you look at our effective inflow layer here, it's where it's basically the layer of air that the storm is going to draw in. And if it's rooted at the surface, like we see here, it's rooted at the surface, these storms are going to be surface-based, have the chance of being surface-based. And they'll be able to tap into this large low-level shear. You can see effective inflow layer storm relative helicity is up 460 meters squared per second squared. That, that is in the range of strong to significant tornadoes. So, again, it's going to be a question of can storm stay, one, semi-discrete and surface-based. And if they can achieve those two things, this low, the low-level jet is going to really allow those hodographs to enlarge and the parameter space will be supportive of tornadoes, potentially a strong tornado or two. And, you know, speaking about whether they're, or not they're going to be elevated, as our low-level jet ramps up, it's really going to ramp up the warm air advection at the surface. Usually when night falls, we have sort of a cooler layer that forms at the surface and you have kind of that, that layer kind of stabilizes and your storms are rooted above that, effectively negating the tornado threat. But if we have strong, warm, and moist air advection into our target area here based on that low-level jet, I think there's a chance that we could see that sin or convective inhibition hold off for a little bit or not become too large so that the storms become truly elevated. But we'll have to see. Going to be watching the, this, uh, how this moisture, how quickly this moisture returns into uh, our target area. You know, right now, based on the models, based on the cams and our observed data, I would, I would start somewhere maybe uh, somewhere near Ardmore or Lone Grove down here on I-35. I think storms are going to fire uh, near, uh, near I-35, uh, near or just after sunset and move off to the northeast, and as that low-level jet ramps up, potential for strong tornadoes exists. Of course, it's, a, it's nighttime and the terrain is difficult, so it's going to be a tough chase, but uh, I, I think uh, once that moisture gets all the way up here, uh, I think the, there will be some tornadoes. Whether or not they're in the, along the trailing cold front back here, or with this initial discrete activity, uh, we'll have to see. But um, I think there's a chance we could see discrete storms out ahead of the line uh, some this evening. Uh, so starting somewhere around Ardmore and working our way northeast might be a, a good bet. Uh, SBC Outlook is about to come out here in about the next 15 minutes. It's 11.15, so by the time this is uploaded, you'll have that outlook to go off of. But right now, again, an enhanced risk of severe weather here for parts of the southern plains with a, a decent threat of tornadoes potentially a strong to significant tornado or two. As you can see down here this morning, they uh, the, said the parameter space is definitely indicative of significant tornadoes, but storm mode and whether or not the storms will be elevated will be critical to that before it transitions to a wind risk, mainly um, in the early morning hours of Monday. Again, I'm not a meteorologist professionally, uh, but I just enjoy doing this, and I've done this for uh, several years now. So, um, if let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know your chase target area if you're going out today. Whether you, you like the format of these videos, whether you, you think we should keep doing them. Um, but um, if you live in these areas, please look um, keep uh, the National Weather Service pages handy. Uh, in these areas would be NWS Norman, Tulsa, Shreveport, Dallas, Fort Worth, and Little Rock, and even Springfield, Missouri. Uh, they will provide the most up-to-date information for you and accurate information for you uh, to make uh, decisions for you and your family. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comments below and uh, we'll catch you on the next storm.